Hello, good people, and welcome to another episode of Money Matters with Excel. Here, we share tips and tricks on how you can create templates to help you manage your finances using Microsoft Excel. Well, in this episode, we have something interesting. I am the financial secretary for two groups, my old boys' year group, Opoko Air School, and our church, Young Christian Workers. Now, as a financial secretary, you are supposed to help people see how much they've paid, okay, as in dues every year. So here I have a template that captures all the payments and allocates, okay, for each year, how much dues has been paid. And this is automatic. So I want to share the tips I used in creating that template with you. Maybe you're not a financial secretary, but you can find it useful in applying it to areas of your work. So if you are game, join me and let's go through this together in Excel. Okay, so on your screen is a modified version of this template. So there are basically two worksheets or two tables here. The first one is the register of members. Now here I have the registration number column. So here everybody has a unique registration number. This is to avoid duplicate names and all that. So here we are going to use the registration numbers for all the payments and then the accounting. Then we have the name of the members and then any attributes that will be helpful in your reporting, you can add it in this table. Now we have a column for date of registration. This is going to help us know when to apply the dues. So when somebody joins, you can decide that start collecting dues from this point. Okay, so that is going to be crucial in calculation of the dues. Then we have a column for registration. So column E and F, as you have it on your screen, are columns to account for irregular payments. So aside dues, okay, people pay registration. So we have a column to capture the registration fees. And then first payments is also prorated dues. So these ones are payments that are not the regular dues. Okay, so any other column that you find you can add here, you can use it in here to capture irregular payments. So first payment can be person joined us two months to the end of the year. We agree that, okay, pay just two months dues. That will be captured as first payment. And then the regular dues collection will begin from that point onwards. So if you look here in column G to L, I now have the years in the, with the corresponding dues payment. So I have the dues for each year set at the top. Okay, this also accommodates changes in the dues payments in subsequent years. So here's the thing, if somebody pays, okay, person gives you 400 CDs, as long as it's 120, it will allocate 120 and then spread the rest over the subsequent years. So let's go to the payments table, a very simple table. So here I have the dates, I have the registration numbers, Okay, which is in the drop down so I can pick the registration number from here and then it throws the member's name and then whatever amount the person has given you you put in here and then you assign the type so the type reflects the columns that you just saw in the register so I have registration first payment and then dues you can add on okay so as an example if let's say ID number 1003 okay makes payment for registration and dues. This is how it's going to be. So I'll come here, control D to pull a new line. 1003 is member three. Okay, so he gave us 20 CDs for registration. So that is recorded. Same member, after making that registration fee, gave you, let's say 400 CDs, okay, to be applied to his dues. Now you recorded 400 CDs as a lump sum here. Right. But when we go to the register, you realize that for member 1003, it allocates that 20 CDs and then now spreads the 120. So we have here 360 and then the leftover of 40 into the 2021 period. So together, you would actually be able to see how much the person has paid in total. So now let's learn how to build this from scratch using Excel. Okay, so there are just two tables here, the payments table, okay, so this is just date, number, name, amount, and then type, right? 
We use tables because when you add new data, the tables expand automatically, updating all your calculations, right? And then we have our register. So when I register here, you just put the registration number, the name, the occupation and any other attributes and the date of registration, right? And then in the headers, you have the year that you want to start collecting this. Okay, then on top, you have your divs. Now, let's see how we populate the payment table. So this is a table already, it's named payments. The other one is also called a register. Makes it easier for our calculations, right? In the number column, we want to put in a drop down. That is a data validation. Okay, to make it easier to pick all the unique numbers. So I'll come standing in here, I'll come to data, right? In the data tools group, you see data validation. Okay, so this is data validation. It's set to any value by default, but we want a list. So I'll change it into a list, go to my source, okay? And then I'll now reference this entire column, right? And then I'll click OK. So what I've done is now, I can now pull any of these unique numbers. Now, if these numbers come in, example, I select 1001, I want the name to be thrown here automatically, right? So it appears there's a data validation here. So let me just reset this. Okay, so here I want the name of 1001. I can use XLOOKUP index match or VLOOKUP. Okay, so let's use XLOOKUP. So XLOOKUP, this is my lookup value, what I'm searching with. Okay, now it's going to be matched in the registers column for registration numbers. Okay, so I'll call the name of the table and then call the number column, right? And then my return array, okay, is the name, again from the register. Okay, so I have the name here. There are other options, but this is fine. So this tells me that this is number one, okay, number three, and so on. Okay, now at this point, whatever the person gives you is what you enter in the amount column. So I'll put in 20, right? Then, we now have a column to help us allocate what type of payment it is. Okay, so here I can also put in a data validation. In fact, the shortcut for the data validation is Alt DL. Press one after the other. Okay, so here I can set it to a list. But this time around, instead of referencing a range, I can type the unique payment types here. So I have first payment. It helps if this is the same as the headers you have in the register table. So first payment, okay, I also have the dues, okay, and then I have registration separated by commas. You can add on from this point. So I click OK. So at this point, I can say that this is for registration, right? Now I can put a date here. So let's put in any random date, okay, 2018. So I have the first record of the payment I have received. Now, how does this translate into the register? Okay, so if I come here, right, I'm first going to do the formula to capture registration and then another formula to capture first payment. And then I'll do one formula that will take care of all the dues allocation. So at this point, we are going to use a simple sum ifs, right? So what are we looking for here? I want to sum, so sum ifs, okay, all the payments that has been made by a particular member from the payments table. So I'll call the payments table, okay, that's my sum range. So my sum range is going to be the amount from the payments table, okay, based on two criteria, that the number is the same as the person who paid, okay, and then the type of payment is registration. So two things here. So criteria range one is going to be payments, okay, the number, okay, should be equal to the person here. Now, if you are using tables, okay, and you reference any part of the table, you get this reference at the field that you have selected, right? You can use a table and not use this type of referencing, especially when you are going to be using absolute and relative referencing, that is locking or not locking cells, right? 
So for this purpose, I want to turn off this feature of the table to make it easy for me to lock the cell references I'm going to do. So I'm going to freeze this formula. Well, one way you can do that is to click before your equal sign and then push in a space. So I'll click here. Okay, so this will stay. Now to turn off that feature, I'll go to file. Okay, then go to options. Right, then under formulas. Okay, you use, you see working with formulas and then you uncheck use table names in formulas. And then I'll click OK. All right. So this time, if I come and I activate my my formula, and then I come here, I'll reference this. Now it gives me the A1 style reference. Okay. Now the reason I did this is that I want to lock the column A so that it doesn't move with me to the right, but the rows can go down. So I can do F4, F4, and then put the dollar sign at A. Right, so this completes my first criteria range and criteria. Now, my second one is going to be, okay, type. So I'll call, it, I'll call the payment type, okay? And then the criteria for this is going to be the name I have in here, right? So this is why I said it's important that the things you put in the data validation should match this. Okay, so I'll now lock this at row level so that if I go down, row two stays. It doesn't move down with me okay so i'm going to close this and then you realize that it captures the 20 cds that's member one made okay now the formula for first payment is going to be the same the only thing that is going to change here is that the criteria is going to change from registration to first payment so i can just shift right arrow and then control r right so if i do this then if member makes first payment this will be captured as well right so now let's learn how to allocate uh, dues so we come back to our payment let's say this same member okay 1001 okay now makes first payments of 40 cities okay so we assign first payment here and then goes ahead so this same member okay now makes let's say 400 cities right and it's supposed to be allocated to dues so i'll just put in dues here right now how do we spread the 120 from this point onwards right so again we are going to use some ifs okay so we are going to have some ifs okay and then say that if we are going to sum every payment that the person has made okay again the same criteria so in the payment the number is equal to this guy so a3 i'll lock this at column level so in this case so i just need to know that it is this particular member who paid so this is my sum apps so this gives me 460 which is the total payment for the particular member but this is not right because it's also accounting for the irregular payments which is registration and first payment so what we need to do is to create a formula that would always subtract whatever prior payments has been made and it carries the balance forward right so for starters i'm going to subtract so minus sum okay now to create that expandable range okay i'm going to select the first cell and then add the next one so this is E3 to F3. So if I'm standing here at this point, what is going to be subtracted is this and that. Now, I want to lock this first reference, that is the E column, so that it's anchored. And then as you move, the range becomes expandable. Okay, so I'm going to put a dollar sign. Okay, okay. then I'll close this. Okay, so at this point, we now have the 400, okay? When we subtract the 60. Okay, now how do we allocate 120? Because we are supposed to just account for 120 for this particular year. Here we can introduce the main function. Okay, so the main function compares two numbers, whichever is lower is selected, right? So between the two numbers, 120, okay, and whatever balance I'm carrying forward. Okay, I expect it to bring 120 at this point. Okay, so again, 
I have to lock G1 okay, at row level so that it doesn't go down with me. Okay, then I'll complete my main formula. So then at this point, you realize that that 120 has been assigned, right? Now let's copy it to the right and see if it's able to apply. So I'll just take this, Control R. Okay, so you realize that 120, 120, 120, making up the 400, right? So at this point, if it tops up, the views is going to be updated in 2021 and all that. So now let's look at a situation where member join us later and we don't want the calculation to start okay, in 2018, but we want the dues payment to start in 2019. Okay, so here we are going to introduce a certain logic. Okay, so we are going to say that apply the dues only when the year that you are in is greater than the year of registration, right? So I'm going to multiply this by that logic. So the reason I'm doing that is that if the logic returns true, it is one. If it returns false, it's zero. So it wouldn't apply if it multiplies it by zero. It would apply if it multiplies it by one. So this is what I'm going to do. So we are going to say that if this year, okay, is greater than the year. So year is used to extract the year from a date. So the year of registration. And then I close this. Now, the good thing about Excel formulas these days is that if you highlight a particular portion of your formula, okay, you get a preview of the value in there. So this is going to give us 2017, right? If I highlight this, we get 2017. Now, note that if I highlight G2, okay, this 2018, is in double quotes. It means it's seen it as text, right? So I'm going to wrap this around a value function. Okay, so the value function will convert this text so that I can compare it with this here. Okay, then I'll now put the whole Boolean logic in a bracket as well. Okay, so if I highlight the whole of this for this particular expression, okay, I'm going to get true, which is going to be one. Okay, so now let's see what we get. So it's true because person was registered in 2017, you should start paying dues from 2018. And what if he was registered in 2018? So I'm going to change this. Okay, now you realize that it moves it further on. Right? There's no calculation here. Okay, so if your goal is to copy this formula down, then of course we need to lock G2 as well. Okay, at row level. So I'll put a dollar sign before row 2. Okay, so that it doesn't go down. Right. Okay, so now at this point, we can simply copy down our formulas. Okay, so I'll just highlight the whole of this. Control shift down, control backspace, F2, control enter. Right. So this now will now apply the formulas to all the rest of the members. So there are a lot of learning points here. I will make the stats workbook available so that you can practice along and then create your own version. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for notification of new videos and hope to see you in the next episode. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel Finest Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.